next piece is a drama piece I performed many years ago. It's called The Gift of Tongues, written by Tyler Freeman. I did make cuts to the original script along with my coach, Angie Bickman. I do not have a teaser with this piece, so I will move straight from my intro to the rest of the selection, and I hope you enjoy my interpretation. Sometimes we like to think that we know everything there is to know about certain people, about life, and about love. It's easy for anyone to assume something that turns out to be wrong, especially when they don't know all the details yet. In this selection, a girl recalls how emotionally difficult her life has been, especially with her birth defects. Even if we do not have her deformalities, we can all relate to the emotions she describes. Her story is a great reminder that even the simplest words have the power to save and the power to kill. The Gift of Tongues by Tyler Freeman. I was an only child, and my parents had been married about eight months when I was born. <laughs> to this day, the doctors can't figure out what caused my birth defects, but that didn't make for a very interesting story. So I used to tell people at our church that my mother was a drug addict when she was pregnant with me, and that's what caused my problems. <laughs> I could only open my mouth far enough to eat, so as a toddler, all I could do was grunt at things. But when I was six, I had my jaw surgically rebuilt, so I could learn how to talk. The surgery took eight hours, but it worked. And the doctors told my parents that with some intensive speech therapy, I could maybe learn how to talk in about a year. After that, my parents believed that miracles really could happen. And we started praying for a lot of things. I prayed that God would give me a new faith. I'd ask for fingers on my right hand. I, most of all, I, I asked for people to stop looking at me. I can remember so many days at school when I'd be walking along, minding my own business, and people would be staring at me. I'd, I'd keep going, pretending nothing was wrong. I, I learned how to deal with ignorant people. But I never felt sorry for myself. I always felt sorry for my parents. And, and not because they had to put up with people staring at us all the time, but because they could never have a, a, a normal kid. I can remember my mother's face my first day of school. All the other mothers were bragging about how their kids could already read and write, and, and I was just learning how to talk. In middle school, I was always in trouble because I'd say anything to make people laugh. I, I, I just wanted them to like me. And it didn't matter how hard I tried. I could never be normal. All that changed in high school. I, I had overcome most, most of my deformalities. And I started making good grades. I, but most of all, I made friends. You know, I was even nominated for homecoming court. I was so excited. I saw it as the perfect opportunity to finally make my parents proud. Oh, I had the whole day planned out. But for the game, everything went wrong. came to the house and walked in and mom told me that dad had to go to the hospital for some tests. I said, no big deal. But I could tell by my mom's voice that something was seriously wrong. So instead of going to homecoming, I stayed home to be with dad. My father tested positive 
for leukemia that Friday. The doctor said that his best chance of survival was a bone marrow transplant from a brother or a sister, but since Dad was an only child, the closest genetic match was going to be me. On the car ride home, my parents were silent, but I kept reminding them not to worry that everything was going to be okay, that I was going to be a man. I know you want to help. I know that Dr. Harris said that children have a, a great chance being a match. But he was talking about biological children. You were adopted. In that moment, I But I also felt relief. I had spent my entire life feeling sorry for my parents, always trying to make them proud, feeling like I was never good enough to be their kid. And all that time, they didn't My father died that year. It was hard to say goodbye. But I will always be thankful for the chance to say thank you for choosing Kid.